What's up, everybody? It's Soren Baker. And I'm Sling Johnson. Today on The Gray Area, man, we got to get into this rap beef situation, Sling, because man. rap beefs, they've really evolved over the years, and right now we got this Meek Mill, Beanie Siegel game thing is on fire. Man, it is ridiculous. I, I think the only thing rivaling this year's political circus is the <laughs> Meek beef? Mill game slash Beanie Siegel debacle. Yes. Stay tuned right here on the gray area. So Slink, man, these beefs, we've seen them grow and evolve over the years. Right now we are in the, the, the heat of the Beanie Siegel Meek Mill game trifecta. You know, <laughs> we got different coasts. We got all kinds of things, different eras, different, uh, collaborations going on different skill sets uh yes i would say different <laughs> most, skill sets most definitely. because there is a, a, a one young man in particular who who is who has a very voracious appetite for for mcs and he's yeah. been doing it for quite some time and to quote him the game himself he says a lot of cats don't know he's he's made for that shit he lives for that right. that's what he said he said i live for this shit and i think that's the thing like you're you're engaging in a war with somebody that this is what they do. Game has perfected how to like clown people on social media, destroy them in songs, and at least right now, his visibility, his reach, everything is just bigger than Meek Mill and Beanie Siegel combined. So like... Game is, game is just really running circles around those dudes, man. I really hate that Beans was brought into this yeah. I really hate that Beans' uh, involvement has been like it has. I, I hate it for Beans because Beans is definitely a G. He's definitely a legend yeah. in the streets and on the mic. However, at the same time, that's part of being a legend. That's part of being a G. Right. You're going to take some bumps and bruises, and nobody's taking more bumps and bruises than Beans Siegel. Yeah, I mean. Uh, he's, and, he's, and he's given his fair share of bumps, bumps bruises, <laughs> and scars as well. Yeah, the bolster. He yeah, had a broad street he bully. bully. He don't fuck around, man. Yeah, he's definitely uh, he's definitely making it happen. But you know, you know, let's 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 cut to the meat of this thing, man. It's definitely to me, it, it's it's entertaining in a way, and I guess that's the main objective for some people. Mm -hmm. in, in some in some situations, it's entertaining, and I guess that's a good thing. However, some cornball shit. You know, I come from an era where, you know. You know, of course, this was before social media, so we didn't have that, so that, right. that didn't apply. But, you know, you moved in silence. Real G's, real street niggas, we moved in silence, and we dealt with beef in silence. We didn't get, you know, in, in front of an audience and say, hey, I'm going to kill this motherfucker, I'm going to do this and that and that person. No, if, we, if we're in the same field, I'm going to see you in the same place, and right. I'm going to see you, bro. Yeah, I mean, that was, that was the thing that also it's evolved, like, to are we now, we've enter this thing is are we doing this for marketing is this to pipe up our new album is this because we got a new single is this because we're going to be in a new movie and it's awfully weird that nowadays rap beef always does occur before one of the participants album or project is about yes. to drop and it's kind of it's kind of weird that that happens that way <laughs> coincidental but, coincidental <laughs> but i don't know man but it's, it's it's the lines are too blurred nowadays and i really don't like that you know what i'm saying because at one point in time it was about music. I remember right. just seeing Cool Mo D's album cover with the Kango under the. How you like me now? Under the yeah. under the tire. Of the, I was like, oh my god! The Everybody knew what that meant. You know what I'm saying? But I think at the same time, you know, those guys may have had some personal issues, but they always kept right. it professional and cordial, and it didn't necessarily have to come to fisticuffs. And if it did indeed come to fisticuffs. That's the true beauty of the street shit because was, nobody ever knows. It yeah. just got done, it got handled, and nobody talked about it anymore. Yeah, it was behind closed doors. It was like like rappers had talked about. You were in a circle or you weren't in a circle. And if you were in a circle, you knew, but nobody else really knew because it was street stuff, you know, street business. And I think, too, you know, I never thought back in the day using Kumo D and LL for example, like they dissed each other back and forth for a minute, but I never thought like LL was gonna go shoot up Kumo D or Kumo D was gonna say Not like- Not for one minute. Yeah, never. And I thought that that, it was about being the best rapper. It was like, who could diss the other artists harder? And like, obviously it ended people's careers and it like diminished people's standing in the game. But I also think that 
you know, rap is a contact sport. It's also a competitive sport. Very so, much so. so if you're not down to do that, man, you got to stay out of it. But I did prefer it when, you know, obviously the biggest example being Biggie and Tupac, where, you know, the beef escalated to where it was just out of control. And, 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 you, and you know, that's, that's the horrible thing about rap beef to me is that all the peripheral people are, are, yeah. are, are <laughs> victims. They hurt all the friends and, you know, the bodyguards and the roadies and the best friend from a long time ago, they're always the ones to get hurt and the loud mouse is doing it never do. And I fucking hate that. Like, really, get out, put up a shut up. I think we should make a hip hop combat league in which <laughs> pay-per-view, you right. line these dudes up and let them squab it out. But you know, everybody can't do that because it's a lot of crack babies right now and a lot of puss ass niggas that can't take an L. You can't take right. an ass whooping and it's just fucked up. You know, and I understand it too because now in this in this age, you take that ass whooping, motherfucking Australia gonna see you getting getting melted on, you know, in about five minutes. So nobody wants right. that. But at the same time, man, stop talking shit. Put up a shut up. You know, and one thing to go back to Beanie Siegel in his in his interview that I saw that I that I heard him do with uh, Tax Stone. Right. Shout out to my man Tax Tax Season. Beanie said uh, a couple on a couple of occasions. I'm I'm aware that. Right. I'm aware that. That's grown man shit. When he said, I'm aware that, he was talking in reference to some things that went on with him and Jay-Z right. and a couple other things. And again, you wear that, you accept that, and you move on. That's the thing about beef. I think hip-hop beef is, 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 is fun, it's refreshing, it's entertaining. However, when it goes overboard, people are really getting hurt. Look, bro, it's just about rap. Take it back to the old days, man. I rap better than you, that's it. I don't give a fuck how much money you got or what you do in your house or how many bitches you got or how many cars you got. Do I rap better than you? Right. Yes. You don't think so? We gonna battle and we gonna see and we gonna let the fans decide. Yeah, and the fans definitely now more than ever with the social media explosion and then also just the fact that it's weird in the sense that the fans seem to have even more sway than they used to back in the day. Oh, yeah. that's, that's based on social media. See, yeah, the, fans, yeah. the fans are being got it back and forth with the social media thing you got you know a lot of these uh entertainers have people that actually work on their social media they have teams of people that are paid and dedicated to doing just that right. working on their social media presence um looking up information researching stuff all the time digging up dirt on their opponent throwing it out there you know, all willy-nilly and it's it, it's crazy like i say it's, it's 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 entertaining for me because i'm what you call a quote unquote old head but I can understand the difference. You know what I mean? I know a lot of these guys is woofing that shit and don't none of them really want to squab. So the <laughs> shit funny to me. Have you, uh, what's your favorite beef or have you ever been involved in a rap beef? Never been involved in a rap beef, but my favorite beef, the most entertaining beef and the one that I think that had me most exhilarated had to be Ice Cube versus NWA. Oof. Oh wow! Had to be. I had to be Ice Cube versus NWA because at that time, you know, when, when Cube left NWA, fans were forced to to take sides. Right. They were forced to choose. Like again, you got Easy E, the heart and soul of NWA, and the rest. You got Easy E, Dr. Dre, and, and MC and Ren, MC Ren and Yella. Yella. You know what I'm saying? Against and, and Ice Cube. <laughs> against Ice Cube. Easy being the heart and soul of NWA. Easy was the face. You so you had the heart and soul versus the lyrics and the drive of NWA. And yeah, I were, it was I, horrible. It was because I remember with uh, Hundred Miles of Running, when they basically referred to him without saying his name as Benedict Arnold, and then you know on the uh, second NWA album, as you may recall, the Always in the Something song they called you know chilling with my bitch O'Shea, and then Q just came down with a sledgehammer. Dog. And you see at sledgehammer. that sledgehammer at that time, and, and you know no Vaseline. And back to the beef. Back to the Benedict Arnold line, you know, in the early days, rap was clever. You had to be in the know. You had right. to know what was popping. You had to be paying attention to get these clever lines. And I think that is dope. That is that is artistic and that is very creative. However, at the same time, I want to give credit to Pac because Pac came in calling out names. Pac came in, he did not. No, he let he, people know. He didn't pull Straight no punches. He didn't, he didn't make you guess. He told you to fuck this person, fuck this person, fuck that person. We're going to talk about Tupac on another episode of The Great Area, y'all. But make sure right now you hit us up in the comments section. Let us know what you think about these rap beefs, where they've been, where they're going, and what you think needs to happen with them. I'm Soren Baker. And I'm Sling Johnson. Hit us up, y'all. Great Area. Peace.